Hey guys, today I'm going to be talking about the single best way to use Chase credit card points. Just by following this video, you're going to instantly multiply the value of your points. And specifically, I'll be showing you how I stayed at a $141 hotel for $35 in points, a $522 all-inclusive resort for $210 in points, and booking an upcoming trip at a $232 per night hotel for $80 in points. Most Chase cards earn cash back in the form of points. These points are traditionally worth one cent when deposited into your bank account. And sometimes you can stretch anywhere from 1.25 cents per point to 1.5 cents per point with certain Chase credit cards through the pay yourself back system. However, by using this transfer partner, you will be able to get anywhere from two to five cents per point guaranteed. In particular, we're going to be using the World of Hyatt transfer partner. And this transfer partner is very powerful just because of the amount of value that it offers. On top of that, what's specifically valuable about the Hyatt Rewards program is there is very, very few blackout dates. So anybody who uses credit cards and who has transferred points to a travel partner knows how hard it can be to find reward availability. That's not an issue at Hyatt at all. Personally, I've stayed at all sorts of Hyatt properties using this method, and I have never once tried to book a stay that I was not able to book due to lack of award availability. And in the space of credit card travel partners, that's a little unique. Before I get into how to transfer your Chase points to Hyatt, I'm going to go ahead and show you three Hyatt bookings I have personally made myself and the amount of value that I have gotten out of them. The first booking was actually a stay that I completed this past weekend. I found myself quickly having to visit North San Antonio for a one night stay and I was looking for hotels and I found a Hyatt property on the north side of San Antonio right by where I would be visiting with a booking cost of $140.98 made directly through the Hyatt app. With this first stay we used 3500 in chase points to cover the charge of $148.98. And doing some quick math, that is going to yield us a value of 4.02 cents per chase point. This booking I made the same day. So you can see that you really don't have to necessarily plan ahead with Hyatt like you would have to a lot of other transfer partners. On top of that, with Hyatt, when we book with points instead of booking with cash, we do not have to pay any of the hotel taxes or occupancy taxes on our stay. And what's particularly valuable about that is oftentimes this is a significant surcharge. Depending on the area you're staying in, it can be anywhere from 10 to 20% tax rate. Next, we're going to be covering a stay I did this past summer. This past summer, I visited the Hyatt Zalara Capcana in the Dominican Republic. This was a three-day stay, costing an average of $522 per night when booked with cash. We can see that I was able to book this all-inclusive resort for 21,000 points per night. This is equivalent to $210 of chase points. Taking this $510 value of the stay and dividing it by the $210 value in points, we are able to get a value of 2.48 cents per point. On top of that, this all-inclusive stay took place smack middle in the summer during peak season, and there was no issue with award availability, and I was able to make the booking completely fine using these chase points that we transferred out to Hyatt. Finally, I have a stay coming up in Houston in a couple of weeks. Looking at the Hyatt app, we are able to book this hotel that costs $198 per night for $80 in chase points. However, you'll notice this $198 price tag when I finalize the booking ends up being $231.79 after taxes. If we take the cost of the booking and divide it by the $80 that we will be paying by using chase points, we are going to get a value of 2.89 cents per point. So as you can see, it's pretty clear that we are getting a lot of value by transferring out to Hyatt. Before moving on to the next section where I go ahead and talk about how to actually transfer your points over from Chase to Hyatt, I'm going to Go ahead and show you these points charts offered by Hyatt. The Hyatt point system works on the category of the hotel. Every hotel is grouped in a category from category one to category eight. Generally your category eight properties are going to be some of the nicest properties around and your category one hotels are going to be more basic hotels. Looking at the rewards chart for these category one hotels, we see anywhere from 
3,500 points up to 6,500 points during the peak season. The hotel I stayed at last weekend was a category one. And as you can see by the videos, it was a very nice property. There was absolutely nothing wrong with it. Generally speaking with the Hyatt brand, you always get a consistent product and there are very few properties that are poor in quality. I personally have felt very comfortable in every single level one Hyatt property I have ever been to. And you can go down these categories and see the various prices. And one thing that you will notice is the price range only has three options. And that's one of the reasons this is so powerful. Regardless of what's going on, we're offered one of the three rates, the off peak rate, the standard rate, or the peak rate. And we'll notice that these rates have a relatively tight spread. Oftentimes with other hotel reward programs, you will find that during peak times, the cost in points may double or triple. Whereas with Hyatt, that's not really the case. It stays relatively flat and consistent regardless. So kind of my point in showing you this chart is to kind of demonstrate that I didn't cherry pick the little hotel bookings that I did. A lot of times when you see these credit card YouTubers and they're giving, you know, values of two cents per point, five cents per point, or sometimes even higher than that, they'll be cherry picking values, kind of choosing a award flight three years from now on a route that nobody wants to take. And while those things like that do work, the thing about Hyatt is it's very consistent. Like I encourage you to go on their website right now and I promise you within your, on your first search, you're going to be able to replicate the results that I'm replicating. This isn't going to take a lot of work like a lot of other reward programs do. So real quickly, in order to transfer points out to travel partners such as Hyatt or any of the other travel partners Chase has, you're going to need one of three credit cards. You're going to need either the Chase Sapphire Preferred, the Chase Sapphire Reserve, or the Inc. Business Preferred. And I'll have referral links for all of these cards down in the description, but out of these cards, I'm generally going to recommend the Chase Sapphire Preferred. The Chase Sapphire Preferred does have a $95 annual fee, but comes with a $50 annual hotel credit to help offset this. On top of that, right now, it's offering 60,000 points to sign up for the card and spend $4,000 in the first three months. And those 60,000 points is worth $600 when redeemed as a deposit into your bank account, $750 if used through the Chase Pay Yourself Back system, or if you're going to transfer them out to Hyatt, as I'm about to show you, it's worth much, much more than that. So anyways, we're just going to click on any of the cards on our Chase account at this point, and it'll pull up the screen. And from here, we're going to press redeem next to our ultimate reward points values. And from this screen, we're going to be brought to a secondary screen. This secondary screen is going to list all of our credit cards. And at this screen, we're going to want to go ahead and select one of the three credit cards I just mentioned, the Chase Sapphire Preferred, the Chase Sapphire Reserved, or the Inc. Business Preferred. And you'll see that I'll have a lot of credit cards with a lot of chase points that'll probably be blurred out for y'all. But the general idea is that I have a lot of points spread out across multiple cards. And that's not an issue. You can go ahead and combine all of these points, transfer these points from one credit card onto your credit card that can transfer out to travel partners. And I'll briefly show that when we get to that step. But I'm going to go ahead and select the Chase Sapphire Preferred in my case. And once we're on the screen, we can go ahead and press the earn slash use in the top right corner. And this is going to pull up this drop down menu. And in this drop down menu, I want to highlight two things. Uh, first, this transfer to travel partners is what we're going to be doing to transfer out to Hyatt. And next, we have this option to combine points. So as I previously mentioned, you may have your points spread out across multiple cards. If so, that's no issue. You can go ahead and press combine points to go ahead and transfer them to your card that is able to go ahead and transfer out to travel partners. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to transfer to travel partners. So we're just going to click on that. And my Hyatt appears right at the top here, but it's not going to for you if you haven't done this before. So you can just scroll through all of the airline travel partners to get down to the bottom three hotel travel partners. And, and in this instance, since I already set up my transfer to Hyatt, I'm just going to select transfer to Marriott so I can show you what it will look like for you. So when you select transfer to any one of these travel partners for the first time, it's going to ask you for a couple things. And these two things we have to fill out is this recipient and then the member ID. So first, the recipient most often is going to be yourself, but it can also be one authorized user that you have on the account. 
So I'm going to select myself in here. I would go ahead and enter my World of Hyatt membership rewards number. And if you don't yet have one of those, we can just log on to the Hyatt website and make a rewards account. It is completely free and very straightforward to do. And upon doing that, they'll give you a membership number that you're going to go ahead and paste into these two boxes. And after doing that for the first time, we'll be able to reach this screen. And here we can select the total number of points that we want to transfer. It's of note that you have to transfer these in a thousand point increments. This is equivalent to $10 in chase points. And so let's say I wanted to go ahead and transfer 20,000 points worth $200 at chase, but worth significantly more than that when transferred to Hyatt. I would go ahead and press this continue button and that's all we'd have to do to go ahead and initiate that transfer. And I think an important thing to note with Hyatt, most often the transfers are instantaneous. I have transferred points at this time probably like 20 or 30 times and I have only ever had the transfer not be instantaneous one time. Now, I will say the one time it wasn't instantaneous, it actually caused me a lot of issues because I was making a very last minute booking, but Hopefully that's not the case for y'all. So you may want to give yourself a little bit of a buffer period here, but if you do find yourself in a pinch, oftentimes that transfer does come through instantly. So it's not really an issue. Briefly, I've made my way over to the World of Hyatt website and I'm going to go ahead and book a stay. And so when searching for any sort of stay, we're going to go ahead and press use points. And now I selected a one night stay in this case, but you're going to find the same reward availability if it's a four or five night stay, but I selected one night just to kind of very easily be able to demonstrate the value. So I'm gonna press find hotels. And in and in this left drop down, we'll go ahead and see some of the hotel options we have. And the first one's 176 per night with a 8,000 point per night cost, AKA $80. And scrolling through these, you'll kind of see what I was talking about. We'll see kind of this floor rate of two cents per point if we take the average per night and divide it by the points cost of the hotel. So overall, we're getting really good value. And on top of that, like I said, we're saving on the taxes. So let's take this first hotel. It says it's $176, but let me go ahead and actually try to go ahead and book that in cash. So booking that in cash, you can see that $176 became $210 after taxes and fees. So most, of, most states have a pretty heavy occupancy tax, and by paying with points, you're avoiding this. So we can see we can cover that $210 charge with 80,000 points for night if we go ahead and make that booking. Some final tips, you're gonna to want to avoid transferring your points out until you are ready to make a booking. And the reason we do this is because points in our Chase account tend to be a lot more flexible than points we transferred to Hyatt. Once we transfer points to Hyatt, they're generally stuck in the Hyatt Rewards program. Now, this isn't too much of an issue since you can eventually find lots of value out of those points, but still we're gonna to want to leave them in Chase until we're ready to go ahead and make a booking, just so we have that added level of flexibility to be able to transfer out to any of the numerous travel partners. And finally, one brief thing I'd finally like to mention is points in your World of Hyatt account expire after two years. Points within your Chase account expire never. And these points specifically expire two years with no activity on the account. So that is you've made no stays, you've earned no more Hyatt points or anything along those lines. So if for whatever reason you find yourself in the situation, say you're one year and 11 months in with a bunch of points on your Hyatt account that you don't want to expire, all you have to do is complete an activity in order to ensure these don't expire. So you can go ahead and transfer the minimum transfer value of $10 in points from Chase to World of Hyatt, and that will count as a qualifying activity to prevent your points from expiring. Once again, thank you for watching and thanks for all the supports on this channel. For some of you, this may have been a more basic video, but I have a couple more advanced videos I plan on releasing in the next couple weeks, so stay tuned. Also, let me know if y'all would be interested in me covering the best Chase airline transfer partners. Now, that's a much more nuanced video. So if there's interest, let me know and I'll get on it at some point.